If I take your car, you no longer have your car. If I sing a song that you wrote, you still have your song. That's exactly why we have copyright, so you can turn a profit. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Jerry Brito. He's a senior research fellow at the Mercatus Center and the editor and, and a contributor to the new collection, Copyright on Balance. Jerry, thanks for talking with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, you've edited this great volume from Mercatus about copyright law. Uh, Give us a brief history of copyright terms and why, are, why do we need uh, to balance copyright? I mean, your title says it's unbalanced. What's well, going on? the reason that the book is called Copyright on Balance is because what Congress is supposed to do with copyright is strike a balance between giving creators, artists, authors, enough of an incentive so that they will create, but not right. anymore. The, the, the founders, when you know, they ratified the Constitution in 1789, uh, with a copyright clause in it, and the next year in 1790, they themselves wrote the first Copyright Act. And what did they deem what was enough of an incentive? 14 years, renewable for 14 more, for a total of 28 years total, and you had formalities, which means you had to register for copyright, you had to ask for it, you didn't get it automatically. Now everything is copyrighted. You know, your book, uh, Copyright on Balance, your contribution is why conservatives and libertarians should be skeptical of Congress's copyright regime. Conservatives and libertarians tend to talk a lot about property yeah. rights and they get confused, or, or that the, the terms that copyright has been debated within conservative and libertarian movements is wrong. They, they think to themselves, uh, uh, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a very honest mistake to make, they think um, property is good. We like property, it allows free markets to work. Copyright is property. It is. Therefore, more and longer and stronger copyright must be excellent. And the problem there is that copyright is a different kind of property. It's statutory property. It's created by the Constitution. It doesn't predate the Constitution the way common law property works. So it's more akin to uh, emissions permits, taxicab medallions, right? These things are very valuable. They're property. They're tradable. They're dividable, you know, but they're completely created. They're a creature of, of uh, uh, of statute. Right, and the, and the idea also that, I mean, copy or, um, you know, a created work, if, if you put out a CD and I make a copy of it, it's different than real property in that even whether the, my copy is authorized or not, you still have your copy in full use of it. If I did that with your house, you would ha one of us would be out on the street. If I take your car, you no longer have your car. Right. If I sing a song that you wrote, you still have your song. And so it's a, it's, that's, that's exactly why we have copyright, because we do want to give you some exclusivity, some reason, some way to exclude others so you can turn a profit. Talk a little bit about the, the central role that Mickey Mouse seems to play in copyright legislation. Yeah, so Mickey Mouse, every time that Mickey Mouse has been about to fall into the public domain, and he is about to become a character like Uncle Sam or Santa Claus or Hamlet, right, just you know, owned by nobody, uh, Congress passes a law that extends the copyright. And that's crazy because you can't possibly incentivize Walt Disney to create Mickey Mouse again, number one, because it already exists, and number two, because he's dead. How do we change the copyright regime? You talk a lot about the politics of the book. You talk about, in the, in the book, the Stop Online Privacy Act, which was a recent attempt to really kind of force ISPs and people to cough up a lot more information about copyright infringement. It seems that when people can copy things, easily in unauthorized ways they will. So is this really just going to go away because people can copy whatever they want? First, the Stop Online Piracy Act. I think what that showed, when you look at, at, at the coalition of people who got together to, to fight that back, a lot of it came from Tea Party activists. The first people, the, the first members of Congress to abandon the Stop Online Piracy Act were all Republicans. Who went down with a ship to the bitter end defending SOPA? It was Al Franken. What his arguments he was making yeah. is that he would say, I'm a Screen Actors Guild member, and I'm protecting the jobs of everybody in Hollywood. But of course, that's not the point of copyright. It's not to protect jobs. I think businesses, industries are going to have to adapt. And you know they're going to try to rely on the law in the short term. And, and that's understandable in part because you know some folks are violating the law when they're when they're pirating. But in the long term, they're going to have to adapt. Final question: Do you uh, do you have unauthorized copyrighted materials on your computers? You know, I think it's impossible for anybody today not to have that the way the laws are written. Fair enough. So, and you are a lawyer. I yes. think that came through loud and clear yes. there. But. Uh, we've been talking with Jerry Brito, uh, editor of Copyright Unbalanced. He's a senior research fellow at the Mercatus Center. I'm Nick Gillespie.